Technology that lives out front, where patients, members, and customers can see it, can help a life sciences or healthcare organization shine. But technology at the core that most people never see can make an organization work. How are advancements in automation, robotics, and real-time analysis transforming core back office processes in life sciences and healthcare organizations and reinventing how daily work gets done? Welcome to Tales of Transformation. Today, I have Todd Connorsman, Chris Harris, and Cherie Riddle from the Deloitte Consulting LLP Life Sciences and Healthcare Practice with me to discuss how this new core, or digital core, is fundamentally changing the way work gets done in the life sciences and healthcare space. Welcome. Hello. It's great to be with you today. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks. Nice to be here. This is a very interesting topic in Tales of Transformation. Chris, what do you mean when we talk about the digital core? Core is those functions, those systems, those processes that support the, the core of any operations activities. From a digital perspective, it's really reimagining that core in which automation, analytics, real-time analysis and reporting, and interconnections are baked into these systems and processes. And it fundamentally changes how we think about and how we do the work that we have to do. And Chris, what is driving the need for transformation of the core? One is health provider organizations are taking on greater risk, greater risk in population health and accountability for quality outcomes and value-based care. They're also challenged to unchain profits from scale constraints, create greater enterprise flexibility, be more efficient, be more agile in the marketplace. And then third, many organizations have maturing investments in their core systems. So they're up to renew these investments, and I think they're thinking critically about what should be the technology and the digital capabilities they need to have going forward. We heard from Chris, who gave us a description of the digital core and what, importantly, is driving the need for transformation of the core. Todd, it sounds like there's tremendous opportunity to transform supply chain Can you talk to us about what you're seeing there in life sciences and what are the benefits? Traditional supply chains are linear in nature and typically go through this structured plan, source, make, deliver type of support model. And what we're seeing now with life sciences companies is that the business models are fundamentally changing. For instance, how do you accommodate for personalized treatments and personalized therapy? In these instances, they require a much more dynamic supply network. So for us, a dynamic supply network is one that allows for more efficient management of inventories, allows for increased visibility into the supply chain at each step of the process, and also helps companies drive operational efficiencies. The benefits that companies are going to expect to see out of this really includes not only enhancing patient and physician experience, But as well, internally, you'll have data and analytics that can drive future internal improvements and enhancements that are going to be needed to address these future business models. We just heard from Todd on this opportunity to transform supply chain from a life sciences point of view. Chris, what are the opportunities around supply chain transformation in the provider space? In the provider space, there are plenty of opportunities around data-driven demand forecasting, proliferation of sensors and automation, strategic partnerships with manufacturers. It means enhancing the provider experience, meaning the physician, by providing him or her access to data regarding outcomes and cost at their fingertips. They can make more informed decisions in better, more proactive ways, enabling highly tailored, precise medical solutions that are faster speed to manufacture. So, Think of it as bespoke medical devices engineered for a particular patient. And then data-driven demand forecasting. Not only are we talking about like automating warehouse, but looking at scheduled activities in the healthcare enterprise and from those schedules deriving what are the right supplies, what's the right time, and what's the right patient to get it to. Cherie, what are you seeing in health plan space? The back office functions and health plans are a little bit different. What we're doing is applying all of the very complex business rules that help health plans control costs, 
uh, between their provider contracting, their employer contracting, and benefit structure, and then all of the administrative rules that work toward correct coding. So it's a very complex space, and it does take up the majority of the administrative costs within health plans are sort of all trapped in this space. So what we're seeing is two reasons why our clients are focusing in this area. And one is to release some of that revenue stream that is tied up in very complex, sometimes very manual processing. And a lot of focus on robotics to follow through some of the more complex rules and free up the people to do some more you know, cognitive heavy processing, as well as things like AI to uh, do some machine learning to really figure out how to be more accurate in this space. So cost is definitely a driver. I think the other area that we're seeing is just a real focus on trying to improve health of the member overall. A lot of our payment structures are headed in that direction as well with the ability to have better data we're seeing and more innovative solutions around treating the whole person that then drives a different need within this core processing system because it's not strictly your provider payments that we're worried about. It's your social services, it's telemedicine, things that have been traditionally outside the health plan space. Todd, what about the financial side of the equation? You're coming from life sciences. What do you see as the opportunities for transformation there? Many of our clients in the life sciences industry are really starting their journey in finance. In many cases, the journey is beginning by applying robotic process automation, or RPA, to a number of their major finance work streams to drive automation, driving down cycle times for account reconciliations, reducing processing time for accounts payable, and reducing time to create analytics and reports. What we're seeing is quite impressive. For example, some companies have automated upwards to 90% of their intercompany reconciliations or reduced the number of accounts payable processing time by up to 70%. From the health plan space, Cherie, what are some of the challenges inhibiting adoption of new core technologies? I think one of the things that are most difficult is just how complex the systems are that they're trying to replace. No one is exactly sure what these systems are doing and how. So we go into a lot of requirement sessions to really define what the process should be. And that obviously just takes a lot of time. Recently, we've had some improvements in approaches around this which will port exactly your current system onto a newer technology, straight exactly what's happening today is what's happening tomorrow. And then you can incrementally change things in your future environment at a lot more efficiency, uh, prioritize. You don't have to do everything all at once. And that's one of the big improvements that we've seen that have enabled successful transitions off of these older platforms. Chris, what are some of the challenges in the provider space? There are several, not the least of which is probably many organizations are are unsure of where to start and how to begin, how to kind of take stock of the opportunities that they have and how to prioritize those. The other is understanding the changes that are needed in their workforce. If not carefully managed, can be perceived as a automation of the workforce and a replacement of the workforce, and it is clearly not that. We have a lot of labor force today that's hired to process transactions, and new core is going to help automate a lot of that and place the person in the role of more knowledge steward and exception-based processing and and taking action derived on the on the analytical insights of what's happening with all that transaction processing, which means new skill sets, new ways to have to engage capabilities in the marketplace and how you hire and retain or how you get temporary resources. Todd, when we think about life sciences, where does this investment in digital core transformation drive new points of intersection or interaction? Companies who believe that their ecosystems are going to grow and broaden over the coming years 
are looking to the digital core to help them. It's not just about making investments that allow for back office systems to integrate with front office functions. In this case, uh, these investments really allow life sciences companies to operate more seamlessly across the broader ecosystems of whether they're partners or institutions or regulatory bodies globally, uh, payers or providers. Cherie, is this the right time? When you think about that healthcare ecosystem, where does the investment in digital core transformation drive that level of intersection or interaction? About 10 years ago, we were seeing a lot of investment in sort of the outside of the technology systems that directly interface with our members and providers. That improvement has kind of run its course without any changes to their core. So there's the information that's locked up in the core is inhibiting the ability to really be more customer-centric which is what the industry is really being forced to do through competition and through the industry convergence and these great opportunities to really improve the health of our fellow citizens. So I think there's definitely the business case. Uh, We're seeing that in the market with a lot of our clients uh, looking for really making this large investment that will pay off for them over the next you know, 10 to 20 years. And Todd, how can digital core on the back end enable front end innovation? If you take a look at some of the new therapeutic areas that are emerging within the life sciences industry, and we can take chimeric antigen receptor or CAR T as an example, this is really a cutting edge immunocellular therapy that allows your own immune system to treat and fight cancer. When you look at that therapy, and you think about how visible that supply chain is to patients, the ability for patients and families to be able to schedule times for their therapies to occur in physician's office, you know, that's a visibility that we really haven't seen in some of the other traditional therapeutic areas. And I think that this is really what Digital Core and providing that transparency is all about. As we come to the close of our show, Cherie, What do you see as the digital core on the back end? How does it enable front-end innovation? If we think about consumer products, just the innovations in any online shopping that allows you to know exactly where your package is when it's arriving, if you think about that from a health plan perspective, you should be able to very easily understand what providers are available to you, what their specialties are, what their office availability is allow access to your data to these providers that maybe you're seeing for the first time. All of this should be fairly seamless in being able to work on your your smartphone. And all of that is enabled by the digital core. So I'm looking forward to what we're going to be able to do with this as we move forward. From doing digital to being digital, that's where life sciences and healthcare organizations need to go. While investments in a new core may not be the most glamorous ones a company makes, they may be some of the most important. I want to thank my guests, Chris, Todd, and Cherie, for joining me today on Tales of Transformation. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Next up, data, data everywhere. An underlining theme to every trend we've explored thus far is data. Tune in to our next episode for a discussion on how the life sciences and healthcare industry can harness the potential of the massive amounts of data now available to generate meaningful insights and transform the journey of care. Stay tuned.